in the Juma prayer, I had mentioned something about these uh, our noble, respected imams and their opinions that how how in Islam it matters. But I told you something very crucial in the end. That don't forget the right order, tartib of Islam. Tartib is Quran, Kitab Allah, then Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then you get the Sahaba and Imams and Mujtahideen and Fuqaha. You know, these people are like this. It's like you have to have a, in, in your train, you have to have the main, the, 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 the captain, the one with the engine should be first, not the back seat. you bring them first. This hadith became a test case for many ulama of our centuries and in the past also. Why? Among the four imams, and I have an article actually, this was five years ago. Among the four famous imams that you know, Imam Malik, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ash-Shafi'i, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Rahimahumullah Ajma'in. Malik, Nu'man, is Abu Hanifa, Idris, Ash-Shafi'i, and Ahmad. Rahimahumullah Ajma'in. May Allah have mercy on all of them. Two of the imams... Malik and Abu Hanifa, they actually said, it is makru. It is disliked to fast after, uh, right after Ramadan. Two of the Imams. But then what happened? They gave their fatwas. And, and Ibn Rushd al-Qurtubi, the great scholar in Qurtuba, in the Islamic Spain, in Bidayatul Mujtahid wa Nihayatul Muqtasid, in, in one of the prints, it's volume 1, page 225, the other print is volume 2, page 71. He said, Imam Malik, the reason he called it makru was three reasons. Number one, maybe he did not receive, one possibility is that he did not receive this hadith that I just shared before you. Number two, it was not authentic according to his knowledge of critical, critical evaluation and investigation of the hadith. It's called Ajarh wa Ta'deel. Ilm Ajarh wa Ta'deel. He was a maher of that too. According to his knowledge, his skills, remember, it's like police officer or invest, high level investigation officer. According to his investigation, according to his investigation, it was not authentic. And third reasoning possibly, he was thinking that people may make it as equivalent to Ramadan. These were the three reasons. And similar reasons were there for Abu Hanifa rahimahullah also, Allama Zainuddin. So this book was written 595 Hijra. Today is 1444 Hijra. Subhanallah. Imagine how long ago. Eight centuries back. This one, Allama Zainuddin, he, Mutawafa 970. He died 970 Hijra. Literally six, about six centuries ago. He says similar things about Han Abu Hanifa also. Today Muslims, they're so biased that when the person who wrote this article, he said that the reason, uh, we reject the opinion of Imam Malik because the majority of the madhahib, like Abu Hanifa and Shafi'i and Hanbal, they say you should fast, that's why we take it. He's wrong. In the original books of fiqh, not just Malik, Abu Hanifa also said you shouldn't fast. This, is, this shows how some of our writers, they are biased toward one imam or the other imam. This, brothers, this last five minutes that I've spent on explaining all this, take this as a test case, as a test case, as a case study of where madhab is, what is the maqam of madhab, the, the fuqaha, these jurists, the, these four imams, kids always ask, what is this four imams? What is this? What's that imam? Why don't we go to Quran and Sunnah straight? You're going to understand this today with this case study. So originally, actually, not just Malik, also Abu Hanifa said don't fast, but subhanallah, their own students and later on ulama of these schools, they all said no. 
We will not follow our Imam's opinion. We will not follow Abu Hanifa's opinion because there's a very much likelihood that they did not receive the correct information that we, the students or followers of these Imams have. And for us, Muqaddam is Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu And I have an example here. Ghulam Rasul Sa'idi, Rahimahullah, he passed away now. He wrote 